In this video, we review One Piece Manga Chapter 996. So, let's get right to it. Right off the bat, the cover story is pretty fun. We see Blackbeard and a hippo brushing their teeth. I really like the aesthetic of the cover story. It's fun, it's light, and it really helps balance out the heaviness of the story because chapter 996 is pretty intense. Anyway, we turn to the first page and we see Komachio, Otama, Nami, and Usopp running away from page 1 and OT. And we continue on with a very light theme from Oda because he had Nami being herself. This is the usual comedic back and forth we always have with Nami and Usopp. And even though it's been 20 something years, I still find it funny and entertaining. So I really appreciate Oda for letting these two shine through. And we cut to the scene where Nami is asking Tama how she got here. And I think it's Oda uh, foreseeing how the fans would react to Tama showing up out of nowhere. And I'm sure that a lot of fans were asking how Tama got there, including me actually. I've mentioned that a couple of videos before that I don't really know how Tama would be getting to the Onigashima Island without a ship. And I actually thought that she would be coming to Onigashima with the help of Tenguyami Hitetsu, the swordsmith that was taking care of her back in their village. But anyway, we see that Tama has a monkey monster. <laughs> for backup which takes the attention of page 1 and ulti. Nami was really showing some concern for the monkey but Tama has a lot of belief in the power of that giant monkey. So I'm assuming that this would give them a bit of trouble, maybe not to the extent that Usopp and Nami gave them but I think that they would be using a bit more energy than they expected fighting with this giant monkey. And I really think that the giant monkey's design is really, really cool. And it kind of reminds me of the monkey form of Goku in Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Moving forward, we see Yamato fighting off with Sasaki's group. And I think that with all of the struggle, that Yamato is showing, Sasaki is becoming a bit impatient and with a couple of comments that Yamato was saying, I believe or I feel like that Sasaki was taking offense to, to what she was saying. And I was getting hyped up for a Yamato and Sasaki matchup. Unfortunately, Frankie takes the attention of Sasaki because he was being chased by Hacha, one of the numbers, and Hacha actually messes up the whole place, giving Shinobu, Momonosuke, and Yamato one of the most convenient and probably an unexpected escape route. And I really like how quick thinking Yamato was. Just imagine having the presence of mind right when Hacha destroyed the very ground that you were that you are standing on, you were still able to take out Hacha. And we have to remember that both Luffy and Drake were able to one-shot a number each. So if this Nabi Kabura arrow attacked by Yamato one hit KOs Hacha, then it would be very safe to assume that Yamato is at the very least a borderline Yonko Commander level character. I also really like the fact that Frankie trusted Yamato so quickly. Just one mention of Luffy assigning the task of Yamato protecting Shinobu and Momonosuke. Well, y Momonosuke only, but you know, Shinobu is already injured. And as a disciple or as a fangirl, of Odin, she wouldn't really have the the mindset of leaving anybody behind. 
So I really like the fact that Frankie is trusting in this situation. I guess he doesn't really have much of a choice since the situation is pretty urgent. But this leaves Frankie to deal with Hacha and Sasaki on his own, as well as Sasaki's group. So I'm assuming that Sasaki would have his men chase Yamato, Shinobu, and Momonosuke with Frankie blocking their path and taking them all on, on his own. But what I'm really excited to see here is if Frankie really gets to fight Sasaki. It's looking more and more like that way, but we'll see, we'll see. And then we go straight to Law. This is the first time we've seen Law in a very long while. And I've said this before in a previous video that I don't believe that Law is trying to contend with everybody else for the throne of Pirate King. I really don't believe that he wants to become the King of the Sea. I, I believe that with the defeat of Doflamingo, he's achieved his life's goal. And right now we see that he's actually just searching for meaning. What does the will of T mean? What is it? What does it do? What does it mean for him? Why is he known as one of the people that are the enemy of the gods? And even though Law is pretty sus with how he escaped from prison against Hawkins and maybe Drake, I still think that he won't end up betraying Doofy and the Straw Hats. Also, I think that with Law searching for the red poneglyph or the road poneglyph, I don't think that Brooke will be finding it himself. I actually thought that Brooke would be doing that with the help of his Devil Fruit ability, but it seems that Law would be completing that task for Luffy and the others. Next, we see Kid after a very long while as well. And he's collecting all of the weapons that he could collect in Onigashima. And they're causing quite a stir in this whole place. And they're headed up to the rooftop where Kaido is. And I mentioned before that I believe that Kid will arrive just in time to save the scabbards from actually dying. And this is something very controversial. I think that Oda is actually confirming that with the death of Whitebeard, Kaido is now considered the strongest character in the whole One Piece world. And I can really get behind that. It's just that Kaido was probably warming up when this whole war began and now he's awake. Right? He's not even in his dragon form and he's messing up every scabbard that gets in his way. Although the scabbards are putting up a great fight, but in the end, 1 versus 9 is still not enough, which is really awesome to see. I want to see this in the anime. I'm expecting it to be well drawn. I'm hoping it's not going to be one of those fight scenes that's going to be drawn out to prolong the series. I. I I just, I just really hope that the animators do it justice. But anyway, we cut to the scene where Big Mom is rushing towards the rooftop. Understandably, everybody in the activity hall is very tense. Robin, Chopper, Apu, Zoro, X Drake. All of them are obviously tense at the sight of Big Mom appearing in the activity hall. But she's headed towards Kaido, so... So this poses an unexpected scenario up top. I actually thought that Kid would end up saving the scabbards. He would be arriving just in time to save the scabbards from actually dying against Kaido because I believed right from the get-go that the scabbards will be there just to deal some damage to Kaido but they won't be enough to weaken him. And I assumed that they would be defeated one by one, but as we can see here, most of them have been pummeled down already. So with the appearance of Big Mom and, and her stating that she wants to go up to the rooftop, 
where Kaido is, well, that's gonna be a lot of fun because obviously Sanji, Jinbei, Luffy, Killer, the Scabbards, Jack, Kaido, all of those big name characters are gonna be meeting up at the rooftop and it's going to be two Yonko against everybody else. I'm assuming that Jack would be going down at some point like five to six chapters after this one and I'm really getting excited for chapter 1000. I'm already counting it down. I actually think that chapter 1000 would be the year ender before Oda takes his sabbatical and I'm really really pumped up for it. I have it marked. I'm assuming it's gonna be December 25. Merry Christmas to us all, right? It's gonna be over the top. And yes, pun intended, I mentioned that because of the One Piece intro. And to end the chapter off, we see Sanji doing some Sanji things. His observation hockey is kind of a distraction, a very pleasant one, but still a distraction. And I believe that this is Black Maria and her adult entertainment women <laughs> and I definitely am looking forward to seeing that on the next chapter I believe it's gonna be fun but overall this chapter is very very nice the story is picking up the pace much quicker now and I believe that this chapter is a 9 out of 10 it had a lot of fun bits we've learned a couple of things and if you liked the chapter, please leave a like on the video as well. And if you love One Piece, subscribe to the channel. And comment down below what you think about Yamato's power level. How strong is she? Anyway, as always, stay safe. Peace.